What's up guys, on today's episode, we're gonna be going over the step-by-step -step process to cosmetically repair this brand new bumper scuff I got a couple of days ago with two methods. One, the sticker or the color match wrap stickers, and of course, the traditional Bondo and touch-up method. That and a lot more coming up on this episode of Drive and Protect. Uh, all the way, oh, touch-up paint on. Can you hear it? All right, for option one, we're gonna start off with the stickers because it's quick and easy, and I think that's the whole entire purpose of this particular company. Now, this is called colormatchwrap.com. I saw them online. I was like, oh, this is interesting. Let's give them a test. Um, you give them their, you know, your VIN and the color, and they send you out, uh, you know, something like this. It says Ford UX Silver from the years, the whole thing. This is a big sheet, um, and on, on their website, you can cover, like, massive areas. Um, I guess that's in lieu of getting an entire paint job. And I'm sure on a, you know, on a beater or some car that you don't really like or whatever, uh, you know, it's a pretty good option, I guess. Um, we're not going to use that today because I have a tiny little one here. Now, I'll be honest with you, I was like, and they, and they send these little stickers as well. I'm not really sure what the star one is for, but um, yeah, so they send a bunch of different little uh, pattern cutouts. And I thought, okay, um, never seen this before. Let's, let's, give it a, let's give it a whirl. And so with the, with the, this bumper scuff that I have here, there's a little bit of a, uh, like if you look at it from the side, um, there's a little bit of a ding with the scuff as well, which is super annoying. So I'm gonna have to use some putty. So I wanted to use this one first, uh, or try this one first to show you that I think I'm gonna go the putty route and see how that goes. Um, and I tested this and it's actually surprisingly uh, quick and easy and, and pretty good. Meaning if you're someone's like, I'm not Larry, you know, I'm not gonna be like a mental person and just sit here and, and touch it up and go play. I, I just gotta put a sticker on it and move on with life. This is actually not terrible on my first little run here. So you take your sticker. I'm just gonna use this round one. There's all different shapes. And again, you have a huge piece over there. You can go nuts and cut it out. So let me just get this off, all right? You pop it off. You see that little piece right there, all right? and I'll pull the camera in. Um, I'll do this again and I'll, I'll bring the camera in. And you just put it on. Now, I, I put a little bit of rubbing alcohol on here too just to kind of clean it out at first. I, I, <laughs> I have to tell you, it's actually not, um, not as bad as I thought it is. I mean, for, for like a quick touch up, meaning like when I do, I don't know, photo shoots and, car and things where it's like, I may not have the touch up, we gotta go. The picture is being taken and the picture is being very far away, meaning they're not gonna be like, oh yeah, see that little spot right there? They're not, they're not gonna do that. It's, a, it's a, you know, a magazine shoot or something, so it's 50 miles away with a long lens. You're not gonna see something tiny, but if it's big enough where it's like, what is that little speck? Is it on the camera lens or not? I, you know, I could use something like that and be like, yeah, put it on there and be done, because I'm not gonna, the, the director's not gonna wait for me to sit there and touch up a car. They'll, they'll, this, that, you know, it's $20,000 an hour or whatever the heck it is for a movie shoot. So. Um, the, the moral of the story is this is actually not, not bad and it looks really, um, it looks really good. So, uh, let's stop right here cause I didn't plan on, uh, I don't, I don't want to say liking these, but liking these uh, as much as I do. And I'll pull the camera in again and, and peel this off and put a new one on and show you the before and after in real life, uh, in real time. But what I'm seeing here is, um, if you do have a little bit of a divot, in uh, the, the rock chip or whatever it is that you're, you're touching up that's very small like this, you're gonna probably wanna put uh, a little bit of putty in there and sand it down first, then put the sticker on there because um, if you look at it in the right light, you can still see the divot. Um, but overall, this is pretty cool. So for the first test, I simply wanted to slap the stickers on in under one minute to see how they'd look compared to the original damage. Here it is from four feet away. Is it perfect? No, but it's less annoying to look at for sure. Next, I tried to cover a rock ricochet on the side of my hood. I used a football-shaped cutout to cover up the chip. Here it is from two feet, and now from about four feet away. Again, not bad in a pinch with less than six seconds of effort, but touch-up is still probably ideal because the goal here is to protect the metal. More on this later. Okay, now that I'm getting a baseline for the wrap material and its usage, I wanted to start over and remove the original stickers to see how good I could get the wrap to look. For test two, I went with a slower, more methodical approach. First, I sanded with 3000 grit to clean up the ridges and to scuff up the area for the putty. Then, I cleaned it with isopropyl alcohol. Next, I filled up the impact damage with Scratch Wizards putty or Bondo that comes in their kit. 
Now, the abnormally challenging aspect of this particular repair is one, it's on a body line or a ridge line, and two, the impact has pushed part of the plastic upwards, causing a bit of a mountain or a point. Simply applying putty and wiping is just not feasible here, as it is in most cases. And after about 15 minutes of finagling and going crazy, here is my bloody patch. As I'm letting this dry, I wanna make a quick point here. Um, first, it's gonna look bloody, what I call it. It's not gonna look very sexy or, or good at this point. Um, uh, but that's just part of the process. Also, I'm warming this up because I'm in a cold garage. It's winter outside. I want to make sure that everything is, is staying normal temperature here. Uh, but the big point I want to try to make here is when we did our, uh, another video years ago on a, um, a black Mercedes, uh, and it was a very long scratch, that was on metal, right? That was a key scratch on metal. This is plastic, so it's very, very different. Now, uh, I'm, I've made the decision to just go along again. This is cosmetic. If you want it 100%, you're going to need to get it repainted. There's no question about that. But uh, the point I'm trying to make with this little clip here is 3M makes a product, 3M5887. Uh, that is a type of Bondo, for the lack of a better word, filler, let's call it, that goes in plastic. I know a lot of body shop guys will watch this and say, oh, you shouldn't have used that Bondo in plastic because it doesn't flex and it doesn't bend, and they're 100% correct. I'm doing it here just as a cosmetic fix again quickly and I don't have that stuff I have uh, what they gave me in the kit so I'm trying to focus on what is in the kit now this is usually for metal so you have to kind of think about those things but because this is so small and it's not like a huge professional repair where it was a huge damage or somebody crushed the bumper and instead of replacing the bumper like you should you would just you know fill that little section in and sand it down and repaint it then yes you'd have to use 3m 5887 but for for our purposes here and for my purposes I think I'm okay um, with what came in the kit. So I wanted to make that point because I know someone's going to say something. After about 15 or 20 minutes of heat drying, I used what Scratch Wizard calls its Scratch Leveler. This is basically a solvent that slowly removes the Bondo in the areas that you don't need it. I will warn you though, it can be a little bit tricky to get the flow or the motion of the movement with your shop towel and leveler. If you go too hard or too fast, you'll remove too much Bondo, and you'll have to refill it, let it dry, start over again, which is a huge pain in the butt, so take your time. Once you feel the impact is flat or level with the existing paint, and in my case, the ridge is somewhat back to the shape of the original bumper, you can move on to the next step. So here's where it gets a bit interesting. Now, I wanted to use what came in the kit for my metallic paint, which is a jar of paint and a tiny paintbrush. As some of you have come to know from one of my earlier videos on the Museum Porsche donation, we used a Lowell Cornell paint pen, which sold out of Amazon in two days and went from a price of $5 to about $30 or $40 in a matter of hours after the video aired. Anyways, I can't even get the paint pens either, but that's a story for another day. Click the link above to watch the full-length episode. Touching up metallic paint is a nightmare because it's virtually impossible to match the dispersion of the flakes perfectly. Plus, this is a vertical surface, so it's going to want to run or build up on the lower regions of the impact. And to make it worse, this is a body line. This is the perfect storm or disaster for paint touch-up. I knew it wasn't going to look good, but it was worth a shot. After round one, it certainly looked much better than a scuffed black bumper, but was I proud of my work? Uh, no. I could already hear the YouTube commenters in my head. So yes, I agree with you, it looks terrible. I was down, but I'm not out yet. So now I decided to let the paint dry and then sand or flatten the paint in hopes of a better looking final product. To do this, I would need to continue building up layers of paint again and again by slapping on coats that I would later sand flat. This, I thought, would be a better approach despite being painfully tedious. The process of paint, heat, sand, paint was repeated for three complete cycles until my eyeballs started to cross from frustration. Now, after the third cycle, I polished with a Nano 3-inch and Meguiar's 105 to see how much better the blend would be. As you can clearly see, with an embarrassing amount of time spent on this process, all I received was a headache and a few gray hairs. Clearly, the trifecta of touch-up misery has taken its toll on me. Like any competitive male out there, I don't like to lose, and this bumper touch-up was draining my life and winning, and it was like 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock in the morning at this point. And to be brutally honest, at this point, the touch-up to me somehow seemed worse than the original scuff because I had spent so much time to get to this spot. Maybe if this was just metal and my mission was simply to protect the spot from oxidizing, okay, fine, I could probably sleep with that. The band-aid is on, and it may not look very good, but it's safe. But unfortunately, that's not the case. This bumper is plastic, and I was doing this clearly for beautification reasons, which to me was not achieved. Remember, I said beauty, not perfect. 
I get the limitations of touch-up, but this was too far away from what I considered to be quality. So for my next idea, I tried to slap the color match wrap over the touch-up, and although the color or the dispersion of the metallic matched the surrounding paint perfectly, it had the opposite problem from the first test. The sticker had bumps or little mountains protruding instead of the concavities. At this point, this is when I considered selling the car and just riding my bike for a few weeks out of frustration until my wife came in the garage at 1 a.m., rolled her eyes and said, you have some serious issues, and I don't think she was talking about the touch-up. Well, whatever. Instead of therapy, I decided to start over completely. The touch-up in this case was not the best option, which was more surprising than me than I'm guessing to you. First, I wiped the paint hard with the scratch leveling solution to remove the touch-up, then re-sanded the area, including the pushed-up bumper or the mountain seen here, to flatten it as much as possible without going through the plastic, otherwise it would have been a completely different issue, which is an episode for another day. Then I added more putty and smoothed it out with the knife. Now, my goal here is to get the shape of the bumper as close to the original one as possible without any bumps or divots. Then, once again, the leveler is used to remove the excess putty. Okay guys, after shooting this for way too long, almost six or seven hours, I was really kind of testing and playing and testing, and uh, I've come up with a conclusion. Number one is this area is way too large, meaning the surface area to touch it up effectively is way too large. This would be a massive rock, hypothetically speaking. So right off the bat, that's tough. So if you try to touch something up, as you can see in the video, it just didn't look very good and you have to kind of be perfect on a larger surface and kind of get that, those blubbers, you know, blub, 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 blub to kind of form into one. It's very, very challenging to do that. The, the wider you go, the bigger you go, the, the, you know, the harder it becomes. So that's number one. Number two is this metallic paint. So again, it's another strike against me. Metallic paint is a nightmare to touch up, as we all know, to touch it up on a larger scale, meaning a little rock chip here, a little rock chip there, Cool, no one's gonna ever see it. You put like the size of a little bubble, like a little bloop, right? It's gonna be fine. But if you do that in big spots, uh, clearly you saw it just didn't look really good. And when you sand it down, it still didn't look great either. So this has been a real battle for me. Number three is the there's an impact, meaning when this got hit, you know, maybe a carriage or a car, who the hell knows? Boom, smacked it and it pushed it in. So now there's a there was a crater as well. So I have to build that up. That adds complexity to it. And number four is when it did impact, it cratered, but at the same time, because this is an edge, which is probably number five, but number four is uh, it, it pushed up the plastic. So this spot right there where it's, that's black, you know, it's sticking up and you know, it's, it's very challenging to sand down plastic without going through it. So what's the bottom line? The bottom line is this. What I'm gonna do, and I've tried this 15 different times and I play with it off camera, is I just put putty in here multiple times and then use the leveler to get it as close to the original shape of the bumper as possible. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is a combination of the, of the two of them. So I use the Scratch Wizards uh, Bondo to kind of fill in the impact and I tried to sand down a, as much as I could the push up part here uh, of the plastic. Then I'm going to put the sticker over it. And then the reason why the sticker is working well is I'm just gonna use an oversized sticker so that it sticks on the outside because it doesn't, uh, it doesn't seem to want to stick as well, obviously, on the Bondo itself, but if you get enough, you know, a quarter of an inch or whatever around it, um, it actually looks much better. Plus, the sticker itself blends really well because it's already blended. This is one that's garbage, but see, it's already, it's like perfect metallic. There's no, there's no, um, you know, it, this is semi-sticky, but uh, there's no, uh, you know, little blobs and things that you have to deal with. So that, that makes it very helpful. So what I'm gonna do is just take uh, and cut up some, some of these stickers and place them in here, and uh, I'll show you the afterwards. But again, it was a combination of the two of them. If this was smaller, I'd probably go with the touch-up route. Uh, and again, some big piece too. They, I have massive pieces. You can put this whole thing here. And uh, I have to tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty surprised that the sticker worked as well as it did. Again, there's a little lip on the edge of the sticker, so I'm not crazy about that, but again, I don't know how you get around that. A sticker is a sticker, but uh, if there was a way to make it a little bit more smooth. So I think the touch-up's a bit smoother, but it doesn't look as good from far away. I think the sticker looks better um, from far away because your, your eye's not distracted, especially on the metallic. So, you know, these are a few things to keep in mind. Again, if your car is not metallic, and there's so many different factors, it's impossible for me to say, this one's good and that one's bad. Like anything else, you know, you gotta use your judgment and, and practice and play around with it. So. I'm very tired, but this was uh, this is a lot of fun to uh, you know 
kind of test everything here and hopefully you guys uh, gained a little bit of knowledge and, and when you go it and, and go at it and do it yourself, you can kind of have a, a little bit of a leg up. As always, guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate it very much. I'm going to finish this up and I'll show you the afterwards. Thanks for watching. Instead of using the pre-cut stickers like I did before, this time I measured the damaged area from a larger square of wrap and cut out the pieces with scissors. Again, I want to be crystal clear, because this area is on a ridge or a body line, it is far less visually appealing. Just imagine if this damage was on a flat area, you could see how it would be less cumbersome and look much better. Nonetheless, I thought it would be best to cut two pieces instead of one long one and have them meet in the middle along the ridge to give the wrap a little bit more flexibility in hopes it would be less stretched or bumpy. As you can see, the pushed up area or the mountain is causing the light to reflect at various angles and catching your eye. Now, there's not a whole lot that I can do about that at this point, but if that wasn't there, and if it wasn't in the middle of a body line, I do believe this would be virtually undetectable from about three to four feet away. For 25 to 30 bucks, having a sleeve of cutouts in your glove box to cover up any scuffs before you get it professionally repaired is not a bad idea, especially for people who cared enough to watch the end of this video. However, you'll most likely need to fill in the major gouges with putty before using the wrap if you want the best cosmetic repair for about $29 and a few minutes of work can provide.